It is January 16th, 2017, and a lot of my subscribers were sending me emails over the past several days concerning a document that they found that was released back in December of 2016 by the White House. And it is a near-Earth object preparedness plan. Just some fancy words for saying there's a very high possibility that we will be hit with a large asteroid, meteor, meteorite, or possibly a comet. And I went ahead and started doing some investigations into what this preparedness plan involves and maybe some of the reasons why this is all coming out now. Even though this executive order and preparedness plan was put together and sent out issued for public view back in December. So I started looking into some of the information and uh, the first article I found said, why has the White House suddenly released a strategy for dealing with the threat of a catastrophic meteor impact. Well, if you think back to 2016, we did have a lot of near-Earth objects. We also had a lot of meteors in our skies. I reported on every single one of them. But going into this article, it states, does the White House know something that the rest of us do not? As the Obama administration draws to a close, the White House has suddenly released a major document that details a multi-pronged strategy for dealing with the threat of a catastrophic meteor impact. And then it goes into uh, talking about several movies over the past that have come out, such as Deep Impact and the movie Armageddon. And... You know, I did see both of these movies, and, you know, they can be very, very realistic. The article goes into further stating, so what has changed? Why all of the sudden focus on this near-Earth object and possibly an impact? Now, it gives you a direct link to the actual paper that was put out, the actual preparedness strategy plan. And as you can see, this is coming directly from the United States government, and this is what they have placed out there. Now, we know earlier in the year 2016, they came out with this new uh, space agency office in Washington, D.C. Well, we really haven't heard anything from them, but we've had so much activity in our solar system, but not a peep from this new agency. Now, this, uh, this preparedness plan is, is quite lengthy. And I'm not going to, you know, go into all of this, but I'll leave a link in the description box. And it just goes on and on and on with, uh, you know, this, this whole executive order and this whole entire plan. And reading through some of this, <laughs> you know, it, it can be quite alarming because it seems that they've been doing a study on this for quite some time. But now, all of a sudden, December 2016, they finish... They have all of their data, so therefore, they issued this preparedness plan. And never in the history of the United States have we ever had anything like this. And yes, we've had meteor, uh, meteorite impacts. We've had close calls with asteroids, and this happens on a daily basis, folks. And one way you can keep track of it, and I'll leave a link for this, you can go to the Near Earth Object Program from NASA. And this is the way that NASA keeps track of all of these near-Earth objects. Now, it seems over the past, and I would say over the past two years, um, we've had a very serious increase in the numbers of these near-Earth objects. Me, I just call them space rocks, because basically, that's what they are. These are large bodies. Uh, some of them are made up of iron, rock. Some of them are just iron. Some of them are just rock. And NASA does try to keep a pretty good tab on these. Now, sometimes they do slip through and we don't get much notification, uh, just like what happened about a week ago. We had a near-Earth object. I think it was discovered and several hours later, you know, it was zipping past the Earth. So the detection process, you know, it, I don't want to say it's actually flawed, but, you know, this type of situation could be very dangerous. If one of these objects did slip by all of our alert systems and then impact the earth now more than likely one of these objects would impact the ocean and naturally you know that would create a very serious situation depending where it landed in one of our oceans 
and yes it would probably create a tsunami and we would definitely have an issue now this is the object that just flew by uh, I believe this was on the uh, the 14th of January this 2017 AJ 13 and you can go and you can click on the information and it will give you all kinds of information scientific information on the specific object and <laughs> if you just go down this list I mean this is everything that's set for all of January all of February and it goes to March 8th 2017 now these are the near-earth objects that they actually know about and like I said you can go on to this link I'll provide it in the description box and you can click on this and you can check it out gives you the astronomical unit distance where that object would fly by the earth it also gives you the lunar distance it will also give you the estimated diameter of this object so it's pretty interesting to look at and like I said I'll leave a link to this uh, this information in the description box now over the past year uh, this information this diagram that we're gonna look at right now uh, this was issued in April of 2016 by the JPL Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, California Institute of Technology Caltech NASA and this is where all the brainiacs come from that work for NASA this Caltech now this diagram is showing you the inner solar system these little white marks here these little white V marks these and signify comets all of the little yellow dots that you see surrounding our inner solar system these are all asteroids and meteors so as you can see our inner solar system all of a sudden seems to become a very very busy place now we have always been and always will be under the threat of asteroids meteors and comets but some of the reports that I've been reading and some of the information that I've been reading is that a lot of these scientists and astronomers are kind of uh, you know on on alert because of the, the the constant frequency of all of these near-earth objects I believe in 2016 if I'm not mistaken the number was up over 15,000 and each and every year this number has grown substantially uh, taking a look at the outer solar system and again uh, this is not something that I made up this is coming directly from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, you know at Caltech and this is the outer solar system now you can see the outer solar system with the little white V marks these and signify comets all of the little yellow dots that you're looking at here those are all asteroids meteors so you can see that they are all coming directly into our solar system and it must be just an absolutely crazy job to try to keep track of all of this so this is what we're looking at this is the last diagram that was put out in April of 2016 showing us everything that is going on in and around our solar system and yes it's quite alarming because one of these impacts could be devastating if um, you know one of these meteors or asteroids would would hit a very heavily populated area well listen you know these space rocks are equivalent to several hundred atomic bombs it would definitely do some serious damage as far as ending all life on this planet well that space rock is going to have to be very 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 big and the majority of these asteroids and these meteors you know they vary in size so we have to depend on what NASA finds how fast they find it and how much data they get on that object will we have enough time to prepare you know that's a hypothetical question I can't answer it it all depends on what they find and if they even warn you but we were looking at another near-earth object that was discovered back in 2012 now they discover these objects many years ago and then they disappear into their orbit and they actually meaning NASA actually loses them and they can't see them or detect them anymore till they come back around 
Well, this object, 2012 TC4, was discovered back in 2012. There were a lot of stories done on it. They even photographed it. As a matter of fact, I have a small video that they uh, videotaped through a telescope this object moving through space, very, very high rate of speed, and they got some photographs of it, and then they lost it. The reason why I'm talking about this object is because it's coming back around in October of 2017, meaning this year, this fall, this object will be passing by between the Earth and the Moon at approximately, the, 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 the approximations are, are very, very vague. I mean, they give you all of the information down here, and they're in, you know, nominal distances, minimal, maximum, you know, right here. And it goes all the way back to when they discovered uh, this object, and they actually, I believe, like I said, photographed it uh, back in 2012. But I'm looking here, and I guess it was back in 1963. 1986, 1996. So I guess they have spotted this object a long time ago. However, as technology got better, they're now able to track this object and estimate its arrival time and how close it's going to come to Earth. Now, some of the estimates that I looked at here, I calculated out and I put, in, put them into miles, meaning miles from Earth. This will pass by sometime in mid-October 2017, at only about 38,000 miles from the surface of Earth. That's pretty close. Now, there are some reports and some other things that I've heard that this object may pass even closer. And the issue lies that this object has been out in space for quite some time. They really haven't had a lot of time to image it and track it. And when you look up here, it says the... Um, the orbit determination parameters. And when you look up here, it says the number of orbits used for their data. 301 times they have received data on this specific asteroid. And it goes over a bunch of information, and then it gives you a condition code, meaning the likelihood of this being a very serious situation. Zero meaning very, very low. Nine be meaning, hey, <laughs> it's time to definitely prepare. Right now, it is at a condition code number five, which is basically in the middle. They're looking at it. They're watching it. And they know the orbit of this object. And they're going to be pay paying very close attention to this object as it comes in closer and they're able to get more data on it. And uh, let me just see here. I know I have this, um, this short video that I prepared for this. And uh, I'll go ahead and show it to you. Pretty neat. Now, this is just the um, the orbit that they had calculated, and this is the actual object. You can see it right there, very very small. You know, and it doesn't look like much on this video. And here is the actual object. One photograph taken of it, and once again, here is the video from the telescope they were able to image it. Once again, you can see it right here. And you think, okay, well, that doesn't really look like much. But some of these objects, hey, if they are uh, like this object, uh, they could possibly be, you know, um, 100 feet in length, in diameter. Some of them could be smaller. Some of them can be absolutely enormous. But I just wanted to bring this information to your attention. It's something that we will definitely be watching over the next several months. But I think that we have a lot of other objects that we will be paying attention to. Because if you just take a look, uh, today is the, the 16th. And we have an object right here, 2017 AN4. It's a pretty good size object, 60 meters to 130 meters passing by Earth at 0.0631 astronomical units. And if you want to try to calculate this into how many miles this will be from Earth, it's, it's kind of easy. You can just go ahead in here and highlight this astronomical unit number. Just go ahead on it, copy it, just go straight into Google. Very easy. Paste, paste that information, 
put one space and type in the letter AU for astronomical unit. Hit enter and there you go. A conversion will come up and it will tell you that 0.0631 astronomical units equal uh, 5 million, or excuse me, uh, yeah, 5,865,511 miles. So, you know, that's, that's pretty far away, but they have their standards for calculating these near-Earth objects. So again, this is something that we're going to be paying close attention to. Um, it does take a lot of time because these near-Earth objects, one day there are a whole bunch of them, and they are just continuously updated every single minute of the day. So for all of my subscribers that were looking at this information, there you go. I'll include all of the links to this information in the description box, and I hope I answered all of your questions. Stay tuned to the Nibiru channel. Thank you for watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is January 16th, 2017, and a lot of my subscribers were sending me emails over the past several days concerning a document that they found that was released back in December of 2016 by the White House. And it is a near-Earth object preparedness plan. Just some fancy words for saying there's a very high possibility that we will be hit with a large asteroid, meteor, meteorite, or possibly a comet. And I went ahead and started doing some investigations into what this preparedness plan involves and maybe some of the reasons why this is all coming out now. Even though this executive order and preparedness plan was put together and sent out issued for public view back in December. So I started looking into some of the information and uh, the first article I found said, why has the White House suddenly released a strategy for dealing with the threat of a catastrophic meteor impact? Well, if you think back to 2016, we did have a lot of near-Earth objects. We also had a lot of meteors in our skies. I reported on every single one of them. But going into this article, it states, does the White House know something that the rest of us do not? As the Obama administration draws to a close, the White House has suddenly released a major document that details a multi-pronged strategy for dealing with the threat of a catastrophic meteor impact. And then it goes into uh, talking about several movies over the past that have come out, such as Deep Impact and the movie Armageddon. And, you know, I did see both of these movies, and, you know, they can be very, very realistic. The article goes into further stating, so what has changed? Why all of the sudden focus on this near-Earth object and possibly an impact? Now, it gives you a direct link to the actual paper that was put out, the actual preparedness strategy plan. And as you can see, 